McCall has some new fall patterns, so we're going to take a look at each one of these patterns and see what we can actually see. We're starting with McCall 8437, which is a Mrs. Overall by Brandy Joan. These are floor length overalls with adjustable racer back, bib pockets, front buckle, size snaps, closure, back pockets. So based on the line art, this looks pretty standard overall territory. But let's take a look at these pictures to see more closely what these overalls look like. I kind of wonder if this is like more of a, an adjustable piece to help the overalls to fit a little bit better in the shoulder. But that's something I noticed. But other than that, I mean, front pocket, which is a bib. Huh, those overalls look like they've been rolled up several times which is a little concerning it makes me feel like these overalls must be really long in the legs if you can roll them up this number of times oops but the back looks fine this is made out of a woven fabric this only goes up to a size 24 so if you have a 39 inch waist the finished garment measurement is going to be 43 and a half inches the hip 48 inches for a size four and finishes 51. I think the one thing that I would be mindful of is really just the length of these overalls because they seem unusually long. I wouldn't say I'm in the market for overalls, but glad to see that something like this is available. Next up is 8436. This is a knit dress in two lengths by Brandy Joan. So this is the second pattern we've seen from Brandy Joan and it looks like this knit dress has long sleeve and it has a wrap front and it comes in two lengths with a square neckline, a square neckline and a bra shelf. But what they mean by bra shelf here is on the inside. There might be some sort of additional fabric on the inside that will allow you to wear this without a, without a bra, possibly. Let's take a closer look at this. Ooh wee, that square neckline. It is about to fly off this person's shoulder. And this is, I guess this is Brandy Joan. This, this neckline is too wide and it's very wavy and, I mean, it's so wavy and thick, it's not laying correctly. Um, if you can get past the wide neckline, there's this wrap front, which is okay. I'm concerned about this neckline. Okay, so this looks a bit better, but it's hard to tell because this person's standing at an angle, so you don't know. You can't really see if this is also having wide neck syndrome or whether it just happened to be the fabric the gray version was made out of. But again, this is a closer look at that gray. Clinging for dear life to that person's shoulder. And this is the back. I can see that person's bra strap in the back. And this does not fit them. This is a fitting issue right here. but it's not on this purple version. So again, I don't know if it's fabric related or not, although I do see this bulge here, so it's kind of hard to tell. Hmm. Okay, so let's take a look. So this is gonna be a stretch knit, 50% stretch. This goes up to a size 24. 46 inches in the bust for the body measurement and it has 45 and a half inches as the finished garment measurements. So a half inch of negative ease, waist 39 inches, waist for the finished measurement is 40 and a half, so an inch and a half of positive ease. And then the hip is 48 inches for the body and 51 inches for the finished measurements, so that's like what, three inches? Here's where it loses me. The, the issue with the fabric bunching up in the back like this, 
this is a pattern and adjustment. This is not the end of the world. This can be fixed. That neckline is, is where the work will need to be done. Next is M8435, which is a women's knit dress. So this is a button front knit dress in two lengths. It has a squared neckline with a banded detail, sleeve variations, and it looks like a couple of views have pockets and belts. So this actually looks very promising. Cute. I really am interested in view B. But let's take a closer look. Okay, neckline's a little bit wavy here, uh, but squared necklines can get a little bit funny. Or this belt is pulling the dress in, which might be distorting the position of the pockets. And this is the back. The back is pretty plain. Not too much going on there. So this is a knit pattern. This goes up to a size 38W, which is nice. So for the largest size, for the bust, if you have a 60 inch bust, the finished garment measurements can be 59 and a half inch. For the waist, it's 54 and a half inches. However, the finished measurements here is 57. I mean, that explains that previous image that we saw here. It explains what's going on here with this belt and how there appears to be excess fabric here, making these pockets look weird. It's because of that positive ease in the waist is getting like pulled in with the belt. I don't know about that. I don't, I don't know if I like that really. And then the hips, 62 inches for size 38W and the finished hips is 68. That's six inches in the hips. And this is what I was talking about, the waist being cut in. Look at that, how that gives you that more of a quote unquote hourglass figure. You're not gonna get an hourglass figure with this pattern because of the amount of ease it has in the waist. While this pattern looked initially promising, I'm a little less excited about this particular pattern. Next up is M8434, which is the Mrs. Knit Dress. I believe this, is, this looks to be the same dress that we previously saw, um, but it's gonna be a Mrs. sizing. So the line art is gonna be the same, so we're gonna zoom past that. But I'm just kind of curious to see if this pattern also has as much positive ease as the women's pattern. But let's see the largest size, which is a size 20. Interesting. So the body measurement here is 42 inches in the bust and the finished bust measurement is 42 and a half inches. So this actually has a half inch of positive ease in the bust where we saw in the women's side, it had a half inch of negative ease. The waist is 34 inches for the body measurement. And the waist here for the finished measurement is 39 inches. So that's five inches of positive ease in the waist. And then the hip has 44 inches for the body measurement and 50 inches for the finish measurement, so that's six inches. So it's not quite the same. It, I feel like these both of these are gonna have like the same issue of just it being loose in the waist. Um, next up is M8432, which is a Mrs. Pants. Vintage McCall 1990s. Are, <laughs> Are we really at that point? Are we really at the point where we're calling the 1990s vintage? I mean, I guess so. <laughs> when I think about it, 1990s was, what, like 33 years ago? Mm, I just, mm, I don't want to think about that too heavily. Uh, so we're going to move on from the... <laughs> 
<laughs> the mention of vintage in 1990 in the same sentence. But uh, this is a Mrs. Pants that has pleats in the front and a pocket and some back darts in the back and it has cute little stirrups wait i'm so confused why does these pictures all kind of look wait what am i looking at here oh wait everything's labeled as front 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 uh let's actually just take a look at this because like the that line art is not all the way there View A has deeper pleats, but view B, who knows, because the illustration is using some pattern fabric. But without getting like a, are these all going to be illustrations? <sighs> McCall, McCall, uh, you're going to be using woven fabric for this pattern. You know, this goes up to a size 24. So the body measurement for size 24 uh, for the waist is 39 inches. Finished is 41 inches for the waist. Okay. And then the hip is 48 inches for the body measurement. And the finished hip for view A is 61 and a half inches. That's a lot. Um, but it could be because of those multiple pleats that you're seeing. That's probably why that hip area is a little bit more expansive. And then the hip for view B is 53 inches. I wish McCall did a little bit more to show and illustrate these pants on an actual model so you can get a better sense of how it could possibly fit you. Next up is M8433, which is a Mrs. Jacket. Uh, so we have a vintage but called 1990s jacket. It's loose fitting and it can be lined or unlined. It has a single button closure, extended shoulder, shoulder pads, patch pockets. Uh, it looks like there's some trim options. Again, with this line art, like somebody did not really take a look at this line art because how come we have view A, view B, and view C? All we see is the back view of each one. And view A and view C are, uh, no, they're not quite the same. Very similar. One has a line on the back of the collar and the other one does it. But overall, it looks the same. Would have been nice to get a front view because view C has a notch collar and view A has more of a shawl collar. Not quite sure they didn't why they didn't show them the line art. That's it. That's all we get. We just get like this group photo of the babysitters club. Uh, <laughs> what the heck? Where is the individual? The back of the jacket is uninteresting, but the fabric here is going to be woven. So you have denim, medium weight wovens, it looks like. Lining fabric, optional. This goes up to a size 24. So looking at the largest measurement, so if you have a bust size of 46 inches, the finished garment measurement is going to be 57 and a half inches that's 11 and a half inches of positive ease in the bust area they did say it's a loose fitting jacket they did say that but that's very loose that's almost a foot of excess fabric um Waist, 39 inches for body measurement. And again, the waist finished measurement is 57 and a half inches. I mean, that's like what, 18, 18 inches or so, or yeah, 18 inches or so. That's a lot of excess fabric in the waist. And the hip area, so body measurement's 48, and then the finished measurement is 58. I feel like this jacket is a little too loose, if you know 
especially in the waist. Waist is like almost 20 inches of positive ease. Insane. Insane. M8441. It's a men's jacket and pants. So this jacket has two styles with some pocket zippers. Well done. View B has contrast. Okay, it's all pretty standard stuff. It looks pretty nice. Let's see what the model photos are giving. Uh, yeah, so you can see the three piece. So the raglan sleeve going, but it gets cut so that you can put this contrast band in. And it looks like they put in piping as well to, again, just differentiate the banding and you can see the piping got carried over into the body of the jacket. This looks really nice for a men's pattern. Uh, this is the illustration. He's wearing a hoodie and this looks to be a stand-up collar version. Uh, the pants. And the pants on the model seems to fit this person pretty well. Yeah, I mean, overall, I think this is this is really nice. Uh, the hood looks to be a two-piece hood. Minor quibble. I, I feel like a three-piece hood just kind of fits the shape of one's head a little bit better. But that's just my two cents. But this pattern is going to be made out of knits with 35% stretch. I'm not going to look too closely at these men's measurements because that's just not where my domain knowledge lives. But overall, I'm actually thinking this is a good solid pattern. Next up is M8438, which is Mrs. Coats and Vest. So this coat has a high collar and there is a vest that has drop shoulders. There's some side panel paneling going on. Pockets and belts. So this is what the line art looks like, but let's take a closer look at the photos. Let's see if we can get a closer look at that model photo. Hmm. This, this coat seems to be relying a lot on there being a belt. And this coat looks to be probably very large and loose and probably needs a belt with it. This is what it looks like done up, which this is the back. The sleeves look crazy to me. This wrinklage that you see on the underarms, it, it's part of the territory where you do drop shoulder stuff. But, and this sleeve looks particularly crazy. And I'm just like, why is it bunching up here? Because this is not how it's supposed to be sitting. <laughs> I, think, I think the model might have been doing some stuff to kind of make this coat look okay. But let's take a closer look. So the fabric here is going to be a woven, like boiled wool. I think this goes up to a size 20. So for size 20, the bust measurement is 42 inches. And the finished measurement is 53 and a half inches. So, you know, a coat will have a lot more positive ease than let's say a uh, button down shirt. That's pretty standard, but to have 11 and a half inches of positive ease in the bust, that's a lot. That's a lot, even for a coat. A waist, 34 inches for the body measurement and the finished waist measurement, 53. This is precisely what I was talking about. If you have a 34 inch waist and then the finished waist measurement for your coat is 53 inches, that's insane. That's just insane. Um, that's like what, 20 inches, 19 inches to be more precise, 19 inches and in the waist of positive ease. See, this is why the model was wearing the belt and this is why I, I tend to steer clear of designs like this, because like when you have 19 inches of fabric just swimming around you, you're going to want to like nip it in, you know, naturally. And that would entail constantly wearing a belt. Uh, let's see what the hips are doing. 
44 inches for the body measurement and 56 and a half inches in the finish measurement. So that's like what, 12 and a half inches. If you were to make this coat proceed with caution, meaning that you're probably gonna need to size down if you wanna get a particular silhouette. If you just like something just super loose, that's gonna be relatively straight up and down, make it as is. Um, I don't think I even bothered with the vest. This is supposed to include a vest, but the vest just looks like the same thing, just with no sleeves. The next pattern, which is 8439, and it's the women's coat and vest. I believe this might be the same coat. It looks to be the same coat. Yeah, it's the same coat that we saw earlier for the Mrs. version. So we're not going to spend too much time here, but we're going to be taking a look at, see, same same issue here relying on this belt to hold it all together look at all this excess fabric here it's just and look at this sleeve i mean again i know this is drop shoulder and drop shoulder does like weird stuff to the sleeve but even this it feels excessive excessive amount of twisting going on in the sleeve so let's see if we can get the Look, they gave you a view without the belt. This looks like you're wearing a Snuggie. I mean, if I were to get this pattern, it would be just to wear around my home when it's cold outside and you just want to bundle yourself up in a blanket, but you want it wearable so you can just get up and move around. This is it. This is essentially a Snuggie. Uh, the back looks the same. Still, again, weird stuff with the sleeve. Again, my eyes just zero in on sleeve wonkiness. So since this is the same pattern, this goes up to a size 38. Dang. So if you have a body measurement of 60 inches in the bust, the finished garment measurement is 72 inches. That's 12 inches in the bust. 54 and a half inches for your waist as your body measurement. Finished waist measurement, 71 and a half inches. <laughs> and the hips, if you have hips that are 62 inches, the finished hip measurement is 75. Yo, this is a big coat. So next up is M8443, and it is a men's robe pattern or a men's sleepwear pattern. So this is essentially just a robe in two lengths and a nightshirt and some pants. I mean, let's see if we can get something closer. Uh, I mean, this is a pretty standard robe. Would have helped to be able to see it a little bit more clearly if they didn't use plaid fabric, but here we are. Let's see if we can get a closer look at the nightshirt. Okay, the night shirt. And the pants are just regular pants. The back pretty boring. Looks like it has some slits on the side for some comfort. And that's the back of the robe again. Because I've seen these type of patterns like a gazillion times. And if you have one pattern, you kind of have them all. You really don't need multiple patterns like this. So we're just gonna go ahead and move on. M8442, which is a Mrs. and Men's lined vest. So this is a unisex vest and it comes in eight styles with a V-neck and some pockets and some buckles. So vests are definitely still trending Although whenever I see a pattern that's unisex, it always makes me pause because who does it fit exactly? <laughs> this has some welt pockets. Don't know why these pockets are so low on this men's vest, but they seem to be in a higher position on this other vest version. 
Are these pockets meant to be sitting this low? Uh, I'm, I'm confused by that. I'm just confused by that. But let's see. Yeah, I'm confused why these, or maybe it's not a full blown pocket. Perhaps it's a faux, faux welt pocket. But either way, it should not be sitting this low. Looks to be several ways you can make this vest, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that looks to be a corduroy version. And I don't know, this looks like moleskin. <laughs> you don't really see moleskin, moleskin in the fabric stores, but it kind of has that look. Um, so it looks like it does have some darts. These darts are not sewn properly because I see that notorious bubble at the end of the dart that always shows when somebody hasn't sewn the dart correctly or pressed the dart correctly or both. This vest looks to be very large in the back. So let's take a look at this measurement. So the fabric is woven. This is goes up to an extra large, which is a size 46 to 48. But this doesn't have finished measurements. It just has body measurements. Finished measurements can be found in the sewing instructions. So womp womp M8440, which is a unisex jacket. So this is a jacket with three styles, dropped shoulders, some zipper pockets. Okay, cool. All right, so line art looks to be okay. I like that they have like three different collar options. Collar one, no collar and a hoodie. But let's see what, you know what, I'm not mad at it. Actually, I would think I, I would say of the two versions here, I like the men's version better of just how they did the color blocking. But this has potential. You know, the back is plain. No need to zoom on that. But the back is so plain that they used it to color block, which is a good idea. Uh, this pattern requires woven fabric like nylon, ripstop, twill. Lining fabric, this it goes up to an XXL, which is size 50 to 52. Ooh, they do have finished measurements. Go off. So for the largest size, which is size 50 to 52, if you have a bust or a chest measurement of 50 and 52, oh, it looks like the bust, chest, and waist all have the same finished measurement. So this would be 66 inches which is quite large because if you have a bust or chest size of 50 to 52 inches then finish would be 66 so that can be upwards to 14 to 16 inches that's a lot of fabric in the the chest area what about the waist 46 to 48 yeah finish is 66 i mean you're looking at 20, 18 to 22, 18 to 20 inches in the waist. And then the hip is 51 to 53. This is a very large jacket. And that might make sense depending on who you're making it for. We're gonna be taking a look at M8431, which is a Mrs. Top and Skirt. Vintage 1970s. So. I am <laughs> not offended by calling the 1970s vintage. <laughs> 1990s, offended. 1970s, not offended. But this is a top and a skirt. And it looks like the top has some puff sleeves and the skirt comes in two lengths. So for me, what looks most interesting is the skirt these design lines of how it curves. I think that looks really beautiful. I, I wouldn't necessarily do it in two radically different colored fabric like this in the illustration, but I think that there are 
opportunities to use different fabrics to highlight that curved design in the skirt. The top, I can take it or leave it, honestly. But it looks like they sized up this pattern to go up to a size 26 and it uses woven fabric. Let's take a look at these measurements. So for size 26, if you have a 48 inch bust, the finished measurement is going to be 55 and a half inches. Why, why would you have seven and a half inches in the bust, even for a woven? Hmm. Waist, 41 inches for the body, and then the waist is 43 inches. And then the hip, 50 inch body measurement, hip is 57. I think all is in order except for the bust. And when you look at these illustrations, it looks like you're tying it in the front. So you, I don't know why you would have that much, but I would say the skirt has potential out of this pattern. Next up is M8431, which is a Mrs. Robe and nightgown. And this is a vintage 1970s robe and nightgown by Laura Ashley. Uh, so it looks to be a high-waisted front wrap robe. And there's some ruffles at the neck and at the sleeve area. There is a tie belt. Uh, so it has a gather cap sleeve. They have a high-waisted back buttoned nightgown. Who wants to be wearing a back buttoned nightgown <laughs> that has ruffles in it? All right, so I will say the robe looks cute already, just looking at the robe. This is just the robe at a different length. Look at her teeth. They are beaming. <laughs> they are beaming. Come on, early dentistry in 1970. Come on with that white teeth. Oh, look at her. She got the white teeth too. Uh, do we see the back? No, we don't see the back. But this is a pattern made out of a woven fabric and there's some interfacing. This only goes up to a size 14. So if you have a body measurement of 34 to 36 inches in the bust, the finished measurement is going to be 42. Okay. Waist 26 to 28 inches. Finished measurement is going to be 43. Yeah, that's going to be 17 inches and the waist, and I know nightgowns are supposed to be loose, they're supposed to be comfortable, should allow you to sleep and move around in your sleep, but it's a Laura Ashley pattern, so you gotta be really into that cottage core aesthetic. If you are, this pattern's for you, 100%. In fact, all of Laura Ashley patterns from that time is gonna be right up your alley. If you love puff sleeves, gathered sleeves, ruffles, and all that stuff, that's going to be for you. Next up is M8429, which is a Mrs. Top and Skirt by Laura Ashley. So we have another Laura Ashley pattern from the 70s. Uh, looks like there's a top and a gathered skirt with some ruffles on it. Now, what I like already is that not only do they give you that 1970s illustration, but they put it on a model so that you can see it. Now, would I have chosen this fabric? Not necessarily so because it makes seeing the details hard to see, but at least we're getting somewhere with this particular pattern. <laughs> they need to do this for the remaining ones when they do the reprints. Like I said, Laura Ashley, if you are into ruffles, gathers, I'm telling you, Laura Ashley patterns, get them. You know, you got the, the chest ruffles. 
<laughs> you have this halter top. You got some buttons. I see some drag lines here, which I don't think is really part of the design, which is a little bit strange. You got pockets here, and then you have even more ruffles on the bottom. I think this top is more interesting. Sweetheart neckline. Looks to be some darts here. Buttons. Let's... It's kind of hard to see what's going on here because the fabric is so dark. I'm a little bit concerned. See, you can see the drag lines here more clearly. I don't think those drag lines are supposed to be there. In fact, let me go back to the line art. Of course, the line art just shows me the back. Where is the line art for the front? Do I get it? No, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get the line art from the, for the front. So I don't know if th these drag lines are supposed to be there or not. Given that it was there for the dress and it's also there for the top, I'm, I'm hesitant. I'm, I'm not quite sure to be honest, but I love how they style it because they show that you can take a 1970s pattern and you can make it look fresh and present day good on good on mccall for doing that same thing for the skirt stylish this is stylish here and this is the back of the dress with it being haltered uh, again i can't quite see what's going on because of this darn fabric but it looks like it they carried the ruffle all the way through the back as well Mm hmm I don't know if they're what's going on there why is there like a divot in the back could be how they sewed in the zipper or something don't know uh, but this is supposed to be made out of a woven fabric this goes up to a size 26 so they increased the size range here body measurement for size 26 for Oh, they don't give the finished measurements. They only give you the finished measurements of the skirt for the bottom edge and for the length of the skirt, which is minimal information. This is A426, which is a zipper case. Uh, so this is just a zipper case in different sizes that comes with a ruffle and a ribbon zipper pull tab. So they have ones that look like uh, takeout cartons here. <laughs> this is the larger takeout cartons. This probably is the family size. You have the taco. <laughs> the taco shape and then the square is like the fusion taco when they try to marry tacos with like Japanese fusion you get it squared so they have this like different shapes might be cute for like a, a child a child's first bag or a child's first purse uh, it, it can still be practical for other people but you may have to either reevaluate the ruffle Let's see the fabric that it used. It uses cotton and interfacing. Okay, cool. All right, so we're going to move on to the last pattern of the bunch. And, and that pattern is M425, which is a Mrs. Apron. It's an apron with some ties some pockets, decorative collar, and there's some applique opportunities as well with the flower applique, heart applique, pockets, gather skirt. Okay, cool. This applique is a bit of a letdown. I was not expecting this. When they show the applique in the line art, 
it seemed to have potential. If you don't scroll down, this looks like this could be potentially a sleeveless top. It's only when you scroll down that you see that's an apron. I don't know if this heart applique really works with this fabric, but I would take this heart applique over the, the sunflower one. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, this is the gather skirt apron. I'm not even going to look at the finished measurements for an apron because again, it's an apron that ties on the side. So you'll be able to adjust more or less. I'm just confused by this release because it seems kind of all over the place. For a while there, McCall had really strong releases that were geared towards just the young and fashionable. Whereas this release seems to ch try to do a little bit of everything, trying to hit a little bit of the kid stuff, the men stuff, the accessory stuff, the baby stuff. And then there's some women's patterns just sprinkled in there. It just feels like not a coherent release, especially when we've seen coherent releases in the past from the McCall. So I'm a little bit, thrown off actually by going through each one of these patterns because I'm just like, where, where are the youthful trends? Where are they at? We saw a couple with Brandy Joan patterns, but I was expecting more. So those are my thoughts on McCall's release. Thanks for watching. Bye.